Hello everyone and welcome back to Restore It. It's been a while since I last posted an update on the workshop build, so I wanted to very quickly go back to the start of last year and show you everything I've done so far. So as some of you will remember, this is what the workshop looked like when I first moved in. I firstly removed everything including the old lights and shelves. I gave the walls several coats of white paint and it really helped brighten the room up. I built six of these workbenches from Arbor Garden Solutions and we moved them into position in one half of the workshop. Next, I brought my ever increasing list of tools in and wired up under shelf lighting to each of the workbenches. We then made a start on the spray booth. This turned out to be a huge project. After doing all of this for the first time, I've learnt so much and can't wait to do it all again, now knowing what I know. The doors, roof and extraction system all needed to be designed and created from scratch. I added the first of many coats of white paint to the walls and then prepared the extraction box and fans for installation. I'm going to add two more outlets to this extraction box in the near future to help improve the airflow. Ducting was added, the doors were wrapped in plastic and the intakes were fitted. Eight 48 watt LED panels were added to the roof frame. After the roof frame was suspended from the workshop roof, Shaped panels were added one by one and the seam sealed with sealant and tape. I used transparent acrylic sheets to separate the lights from the paint. The main doors were fitted and the airlock door going into the spray booth was cut and supported. And that's about where we got to before I started the E30 bodywork series. But before we get to the present day, I want to give a big thank you to Carly for supporting this channel and sponsoring this episode. With the Carly app, you get access to the hidden world inside your car that you weren't able to unlock until now. The modern vehicle, regardless of cost, contains up to 80 complex electronic control units with between 5 and 20 million lines of code. The Carly app empowers you by not only providing access to the data, but interpreting and making it easy to understand and operate, all directly through the smartphone, whenever and wherever you need it. You can do things like perform your own service, for example the oil service reset, battery registration and loads more. You can even check a second hand car before you buy it for mileage manipulation and driver's behaviour which will help you understand more about the car and help you make a more informed decision. Carly lets you see the overall health of the vehicle and detect hidden errors before they turn into costly damages. You can also customise your car through coding hidden features that are already there and make your old car feel like a newer one. For example adding a digital speedo or removing the engine stop start feature. Carly has designed a new adapter that works with all brands to empower as many car owners as possible. The available features and pricing vary from car manufacturers, models and even the hardware and software in the car. The health feature works with every brand, while the coding possibilities work with BMW, Mini, Volkswagen, Audi, Seat, Skoda, Toyota and Lexus. A lot of the health related features work with the free version of the app, you just need the Carly adapter. If you click the link in the video description and use my code RESTORE IT at checkout, you'll get a whopping 20% off your order. Thanks to the Carly app for supporting Restore It, let's get back in the workshop. So this episode is going to be a bit sporadic as I've only been working on the workshop when I take a break from working on the cars, which is not very often at all. As you've seen from the thumbnail of this video, I'm currently working on an E30 M3 alongside the coupe and the touring. Get yourself sub to East Coast Restorations if you want to see content on that car in a slightly different style from Restore It. Those videos are coming very soon. Because there's going to be so many parts that need restoring and therefore painting across the three cars and rusty nut restorations, I'm going to get the spray booth as close to being finished as I can in this episode without adding the Colad film for booth and Colad flooring. The airlock room still needed a workshop side door and some more ceiling to ensure no paint could escape. Next episode, I'm going to add a ventilation system that will extract the paint back into the spray booth and through the main extraction system. With the door cut, it was braced and put on hinges. After adding that many lights above the spray booth, I wanted that sort of light on the other side of the workshop. DJ added a loom and got to work on adding 8 of the same LEDs.
when you're not using a grid to support these panels, they can be quite a pain to get perfectly level, but we got there in the end. The new doors were taped with aluminium tape, and I will glue door seals along the seams when I find something that suits. The extraction ducting was extended with a 450mm coupler and 15mm of ducting that will go into a final stage filter box when it gets here. I added a hydraulic press to the workshop, just a small 12 ton one as I desperately needed one and at the time this is the only one I could get. I would like to upgrade to a pneumatic 20 or 30 ton one very soon. I've started to collect body working tools with the E30 chassis work I'm currently undertaking and I've also got my hands on my first MIG welder and plasma cutter, both of which have been great so far. This workbench became the official paint mixing and storage area, which reminds me, this 3 horsepower workhorse compressor, which has been perfect since I got it is so much quieter than the cheap Chinese ones and big enough to get plenty of work done. I would recommend this to anyone. This workbench became the electric tools bench. I got myself a mini lathe to practice before I go for the real deal very soon. I already have a zinc and nickel plating tank kit. The other important one I'm missing is a blacking kit. I'm going to make that one up in this episode. To do that, I need to add 9 litres of distilled water into a container with a tank heater inside and wait until it reaches at least 25 degrees. I can then start adding the chemicals that make up the electrolyte. Whilst we wait for that, let's have a look at this rapid air system I got to supply the spray booth with compressed air. This kit only comes with two outlet inlets and a manifold for the compressor. This is definitely not enough to do the spray booth and workshop, so I've ordered a lot more connectors and tubing so I can go as crazy as I like with it. These outlet kits come with a 45 degree elbow, a water drain, a stopper, a straight connector and the block. These are really well made and very easy to put together, but yeah, the rapid air kit is enough to do very little. They also use a half inch hose, which isn't a standard size for quick fitting connectors. So I have to buy more rapid air fittings from them, which is kind of annoying. Next time I do this, I'll go for a more generic setup from a local supplier. With the water up to temperature, I can add all of these chemicals in the correct order and amounts until the pH is correct using the provided pH testers. With the solution ready, I added the anodes to the tank I should have used and transferred the solution over. I gave an already zinc plated nut a quick clean and pickle until it was beading water and gave it a test to see what would happen. Well it definitely went black but with a bit more practice I should have some lovely shiny plants in no time. As I'm going to be painting more things at one time in the spray booth I want to start using an air fed mask and to do that I need to filter the air coming from the compressor before it enters my precious lungs. With this three stage filter from ANI that becomes very possible. Not only can I breathe the air coming out of the last filter, I can run pneumatic tools through the first two which will remove any particles, water or oil from the air, which is just how pneumatic tools like their air, super clean. I needed to add the correct fittings to the outlets so the hose could be fitted and the tools could be added. With every outlet filled with a connector or gauge, it was ready to be added. But before we do, I want to do something some of you have wanted me to do for a very long time, and that's to attach my tools to the bloody workbench. A lot of you seem triggered by this, and I'm not surprised as I really should have bolted them down a long time ago. After clearing the bench, I drilled a hole big enough for the plugs with a hole saw to keep the cables tidy and also to have a way of having everything plugged in at once and ready to go.
It's been a long time coming, but finally everything is bolted down and I agree, I should have done this a long, long time ago. Another recent addition to the workshop is this stretcher shrinker. This absolutely wanted bolting down straight away, which is probably what reminded me to do everything else. So this tool works by either stretching or shrinking sheet metal with two types of jaws. It repeatedly pinches the metal until it's at your desired shape. As you can see, this one will stretch the metal. Going back to the ANI air filter, I decided to fit what I had of the system I wanted to make. This is only going to cover some of the spray booth and I want to cover the workshop and the secondary workshop which has the blasting cabinet in it. This will be the main inlet of the system. Off to the right is the filter for the air fed mask and spray gun as well as the two for general air tools. For things like the blasting cabinet in the second workshop, I'll use a dedicated filter for the whole room just as it enters through the wall. I'll be adding in and piping up more of these outlets around both of the rooms next episode. With everything I have for now in place, I started cutting the pipe and adding the connectors to fit everything together. To keep it as straight and as flush as possible, I used some wood behind the tubing and hammered some hose clamps along the line to keep it neat. When it came to getting inside the spray booth, I drilled a hole slightly bigger than the tube and added an L and T bracket to go in and then out in both directions. The hole around the tube will be sealed once everything is in its final place. I then added these two wall mounted gun holders next to the outlets. These are something I've needed also for a very long time. As sad as it is, I'm really looking forward to using this setup for the first time. Next episode, I'll finish the air system and add the protective walls and flooring from Colad to the spray booth. One thing I've been meaning to do for a while is cover this workbench top with metal to stop the paint from soaking into the MDF. It's a little bit late for that, but better late than never, eh? I removed everything for the first time in a while and had a good look at the mess I've made. I scraped off as much as I could and then added the sheet of metal. It is indeed the wrong size, but I'll find a way of using the wooden sides for something I'm sure. I screwed it in place and returned everything back to where it was with the addition of these four spray gun holders. Looks good now, but everything will soon be covered in paint. Oh well, I'll enjoy it whilst it lasts. And that's about it for this episode. I have the chassis in the workshop at the moment, taking up most of the space and most of my time for that matter. The E30 M3 has also been in the spray booth for a while, getting worked on and getting filmed for East Coast Restorations. And Rusty Nut Restorations has at least five episodes being worked on right now. So there's lots more to come from me very soon. I'm working on so many things at once right now. Get subbed on all three channels if you like what I'm doing and stay tuned for another workshop episode coming soon. Next on Restore It, I'll get to work on adding the amazing replacement panels from E30 Garage Norway to the 325i chassis. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you then.